What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and as always, it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. Today, I'm taking a look at Baja Edge of Control HD Edition, or as I like to call it, the whoever asked for this edition. But the honest truth is, for many, this is a game that slipped past the radar in its PS3 and Xbox 360 days, and yet those who played it remember it for its unique offerings that it had, like two-hour-long races, massive courses, much larger than almost anything else on the market, and of course, a frame rate that dropped lower than questionable crypto coin ICOs. Brought to you by 2XL Games, the title is going to be out September 14th for the Xbox One, PS4, and PC for the suggested price of $29.99. Let's see how it did, shall we? As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for Baja Edge of Control HD. On the edge of Out of Control, Undrinkable Water, and Napa Repair Helicopters. Graphics start first. I cannot remember a game that looked this good while looking this bad in a long damn time. This isn't the equivalent of every rom-com where the nerd takes off their glasses and they're a closet hottie. This is where they take off their glasses and there's another friggin' pair of glasses there. It's just maybe a little bit more stylish. One moment you're tearing down the steep backside of a mountain that probably has some kind of cool name like False of Doom or Mount Oh Shit, and you're zooming down this thing at speeds that look like they should tear the color from everything off around you, and it looks awesome. One truck will make a wrong turn in front of you and flips end over end into the distance, and then you turn a corner, entering into a deep rut, and the world starts to take on the appearance of the first black and white films. The frame rate dumps, and things begin to judder uncontrollably. Then boom, back to normal. Now luckily that doesn't happen a ton of times, but it does seem to happen in particular areas of some of these races. And then you think, oh you know what, I should probably switch to hood mode, and the game goes completely batshit insane and draws half the screen and not the other half. And this isn't a visor you're seeing, this is a strange, corrupted, glitching wash, tested on two systems. Strangely enough, this didn't happen very much at all on the normal levels, but if you jump into the career, it happened with almost all the vehicles, some of them maybe not even being able to see out that front window. That needs to be patched ASAP. When it comes down to it, luckily there is another view that just shows your gauges, but it's sort of disappointing. And while it is remastered, and it's not incredibly apparent until you see the original, and you have that holy crap moment where you discover that the original looked like it was screened through cottage cheese and glaucoma. It is just a blurry mess of nastiness that's really shorn up here with 1080p resolutions on the PS4 and the Xbox One and up to 4K on the PC. Now there are moments of brilliance as well, like 10 deep hill climbs up to your neck and excellent particle effects and thick debris, or trying to ace a perfect berm in a track that always seems to give you trouble and coming down into locations with flooded race lines. All of that looks right in line for a budget title at this price. It's good stuff. Now, when it comes to the cars themselves, of which there are over 160, they look fine. You can tell it is remastered and they aren't the most high poly cars in the world. Hell, it's no Forza, but in the end, it also doesn't have a bunch of downloadable DLC to cost you a bunch of money. It's just all the game right away. And while damage isn't really incredibly visually impressive and is usually just parts of the car shooting off like fireworks, the system underneath it, especially in the Baja events, shows that considerable work was done to make Baja feel different. And it's something that I think a lot of fans originally had noticed. And I also have to say, I love the visual feedback here. I think we all have at least one game that we know of where you're racing across a landscape that looks like the graphical representation of our own lives, twists and turns, and basically just cliffs, but the car just sort of powers through them, never really impacting that game world. Now that can't be said here with some fairly accurate reaction and physics systems that can send you hurtling over a cliff or sand dune if you cut the wrong line. Also, it has local multiplayer, which is up to four players in any of the modes, meaning you can invite three of your friends over and sit back and race. Of course, the game does take a dramatic graphics hit. It's displaying the game four times now, but that inclusion is rare and I think absolutely appreciated by a lot of gamers. And of course, that's Mimic. You can do those kind of things online as well. Now, as a remastered package, I'll just say this. At a lower cost, Baja does a lot of things right, and it's best to enter this race knowing it's not dirt. It's not Forza. It's not Forza Horizon you will be utterly disappointed if you think it is. It's on its own and it's a fairly budget price and not without moments of grandeur, like when you enter a free drive area and you really just sit down exploring lines and driving all over this vast world. I just wish they'd short up that frame rate a bit occasionally here and there and really do need to fix that cockpit bug. Luckily, with the PC, most of these issues are gonna be far less pervasive. Sound, music, and voice.
let's do sound first. Now, this is more hit than miss. I think for some people it's gonna be a bit confusing, so just buckle in for a second. If you've actually ever truly been in one of these vehicles whose sole reason for existing apparently is to see if man flight is possible by strapping a dude into a high-powered chassis that's made of metal tubes and then giving them all the space in the world to test it out, you know that it can actually sound like a collected bag of parts from Ace Hardware just smashed in the cement all the time. Things rattle, they roll, and that perfect curated sound we hear in many games is actually not to be heard as suspension pushed to its limits not only seems like someone ass punched you with a two-ton forklift, but it also makes the oddest bassy hollow thump that you've ever heard. And for that, I have to actually applaud these guys as I did with the original. It gets a ton right. Now, that being said, I hated the engine sounds in the original and I despise them now. If they aren't rat -tat tapping on the RPM limiter, they're spooling up without a great deal of force or overly dynamic sound that engines open to the air like this usually have. Also, the game requires odd concessions like huge changes to the audio levels if you wanna drive outside the truck and hear the engine to sort of figure out where you are when it comes to your power band. But if you switch views, then once you jump inside the car, it sounds like you actually jumped inside the engine. Now, that being said, the game sounds work well when it comes to informing the driver. And once it's tuned right, it was nice to be flying through the air into the ocean of the deep blue sky, only to realize as I landed that I was going to land on some poor sap's dune buggy, all simply because the audio worked well and I heard that engine coming up below me. As a package, it's not lovely sounding. But strangely enough, it's actually fairly accurate for the most part with racing of this type. And I like that. Music. Miss. Completely big miss. This is the sort of miss that NASA not remembering someone who's using a different measuring unit and cratering one of their spacecraft had. This is a lot of filler, rock and roll and thrash that makes you leap for the off button. It's not because the artists suck. They don't. It's because as a whole, they don't really fit even what's going on or feel like they fit in the game or, well, sound good. So yeah, I guess maybe some of them do suck. And then it shows that picking particular music from a particular time can age poorly, and this really does. Best to turn it off and listen to the soundtrack of the road. That is except for the main music, which is actually somewhat not bad. A good themed guitar led track with a more sedate feel than the rest of it. Voice. Other than the description of each event, pretty much very little voice except for a couple one liners in the game. So moving on. Gameplay. So Baja Edge of Control originally let you tear through a ton of modes across large swaths of land and tried its best to represent a sport that at that time was actually locked down to a lot of defined tracks and closed environments. And pretty much the HD remake does the same thing and lets you play out a number of different ways. Separate races with King of the Hill, Baja Rally, and even open exploration. Or the Baja career with its massive mode that stretches through a large number of class events requiring experience and wins to move up and you signing sponsors for more cash that require you to, you know, actually race without rubbing them off into someone's face. Here you also unlock and buy upgrades for the vehicles, all manner of them, from better cooling systems, tires, suspension, all kinds of actual engine parts, and of course, shaving off even more weight from vehicles already stripped clean of anything that isn't needed. And the push-pull here, especially with the damage set to full in a super long race, is phenomenal and really not matched in a lot of the games. Do you spend money on a power upgrade knowing it might overheat your vehicle in this race? Or do you go the turtle route, shoring up durable systems for a tried and true performer? This is not something that hasn't been done elsewhere. It just seems more defined here. The gameplay package is rounded out with multiplayer with both online and local four player split screen, as I said before. Now, while entering a new contested field of remakes, remasterings, and reimagination neenies, or whatever the hell you want to call it, some of these bastard children just show up with a thick coat of makeup slathered on and hope that no one will notice they're ancient under the surface. And in many places, Baja represents itself well regardless of that, but also shows its age as well. First, it really does nail the berm and turn kind of racing we see in these events, and the ability to pop the clutch on the berm and shoot out of a turn is epically useful and just downright fun when you actually nail it right. And the physics and the terrain really work to make the game feel connected as a whole. And to me, it's the underlying systems and how they work in the game where the heart is here. For example, Baja tracks. There's a number of systems in the car, heating, cooling, damage across those systems that can do damage across others and so forth. With some of the longer races, if you have the full damage on like Baja, you actually have to call repair helicopters to your location for repairing things that get damaged. Keep on the gas full bore in 120 degree heat and soon your radiator is going to be spilling your car's lifeblood all over the dunes or thunder across a tough patch and you might be unlucky and have a flat tire that actually requires you to stop and have the car repaired in that short amount of time. Now these systems can be turned off, but I assure you, you would probably not want to. It can feel odd thinking, hey, you know what, I need to go slower so I can go faster because I'm slower for longer than faster for shorter. But well, there you have it. And it actually works in this game. It's incredibly useful to understand that as well. 
And one word of warning, and that's for the hill climb events. If you have full damage on and treat that open-ended buggy like the first man-made meteorite and slam it into the ground on the backside of the mountain on your way down, it is sure to cause insane amounts of damage. But where the game shows its age is in its offerings. Back then, it offered me this unique title that might have been rough around the edges, but it still did something unique with three-hour-long races and varied in huge environments. But sadly, those times are long gone, and the competition now includes games like Forza Horizon, the various dirt titles, and others. And while all offering more or less degrees of masterful manipulation of 2,000 pounds of steel roll bar death, the fact is they do actually offer it. It makes Baja a little less noticeable as an example of something unique. But I will say this, for me, Baja itself, that type of race is probably the instrument of choice to really show the uniqueness of this game. Races that last up to three hours where a battle for a single place can take 20 minutes and with a stunningly deft hand at manipulating scenery and track means it actually feels like you're consistently going places with no real repeated racing sections. It's heady stuff, though its audience may be a very select group. Now, much of the reason why I like it so much is the control, which really just feels right. And if it's not, you can tune every element until your heart's content, from AI to turn speeds, camber, damage levels, and so on, including the realism of the physics. But it's fantastic stuff, and I find myself drawn to it regardless of any other issues, because since Le Mans 24 and just a few other games have really offered something like this, it is an incredibly enjoyable experience where each vehicle class also feels dramatically different from the others and requires some completely different strategies even if you end up on somewhat the same course. Take the 4x4 class for example. In the career it's a bit down the road from the Baja Unlimited which can have you noticeably wondering where the speed went and not able to keep momentum going in places where it wasn't a problem before but at the same time you're now able to climb hills and locations you really had to watch out for in the Unlimited class. While not always nailing it, when it does, that's some pretty cool stuff. Lastly, a little bit about the AI. You have a detailed slider from easy to hard, and I found that the game's AI handled the tracks well, and while they were at times a bit beeline for their own special racing line that they obviously liked, that's really no different from me, and seeing one of them mistime a turn and roll over was excellent, especially as this happens a good deal in some of these games. It feels far less artificial than some other titles, and of course, since many of you are on the track at any one time in some of these races, regardless of the race length, it can add this always missing feeling of liveliness that we get in some other titles. As a package, there is a ton to like here. As with the original though, there are some missteps. Fun factor. You know, I admit some of these race offerings just really aren't for me, but the large swath of vehicles and the various unique locations and some of the race types that are for me makes up for it. And the multiplayer on the same screen, even at the reduced look, is still a great add and something different for people who've maybe memorized every right turn one. It's a game that offers a slim subset, but then dives deep into the offerings there. And even when the original title came out, that was something noteworthy at least. And while this is mostly just a graphical bump from the original, which no one was going to say looked amazing, there are moments, however brief, where you sit back and think, man, I just raced for two hours without a stop in a place that basically should just be called Here There Be Dragons. But make no mistake, it's the kind of game that speaks volumes for a very slim audience with racing, and that audience just happens to also be me. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale, with rent being replaced by deep, deep sale for the PC titles. This is actually a wait for sale, and the main reason is this. While it doesn't necessarily need to have the best graphics in the world, and it is only $29.99, the fact is, is that it does have some graphical issues that need to get shored up, especially that career bug where you can't actually race inside of the cockpit. It is a stunning bug and one that shows up in a place where a lot of people are going to actually want to be. Now, there are some workarounds around that, but in all honesty, I think that needs to be fixed. I need maybe the frame rate to be shored up a little bit before this would be a run out there and get it. So that's it for me. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. Maybe check out Twitter or maybe become a patron. It's where I continue to give you guys reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.